What's going on, team? I'm ready to get right back to it. It's, of course, start swing trading. Who's ready to get back to this market? I know I'm ready. Let's get, take a look at what we got today. And, of course, another tough day in the markets. I'm not saying it's easy by any means. It's been very difficult as of late to kind of judge this market. Let's get to the market. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY getting up there towards the 430s here. And let's get towards the 15 minute. You guys can see we kind of held a little bit of a pullback level. And that was off of the trend line, off of the daily levels. You can see this trend line right here. And now we're actually getting up there towards the 400. It's crazy to me that since the banking crisis has started, this is what we've done. We've done an up move since kind of this happened. Of course, Thursday came. This was that Thursday where we got knocked down. But we're right back there. If we some reason can get back up here towards 405, 410, can we just shake off the bank crisis? All questions to be asked. And right now, I don't think anybody has the answers. Now, of course, there is some stocks in the S&P 500 that did have a really strong day today. So let's get to the strongest stocks in the SPY today. All right, strongest stocks were FRC. Is this something we could have played? Well, at least in my eyes, it still hasn't broken out, but it did give you this kind of pattern where you did try to get up there, right? You guys can draw an upward trend line from the bottom side of this, and this looks a little bit more like a flag pennant here. We'll see if it can hold 14 and really get back up there towards the 1450s and continue to push higher on First Republic Bank. Of course, one of the major banks that is a concern, but we'll have to wait to see what happens here. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at some other action. Um, why did we get so much volume? Is there any news? When? Is this uh, closing balances that you're seeing? What stock? You got to let me know. Um, let me know, Nathan, what, what stock you're looking at. Uh, what's up, Hawaii? Today was a mess. Got squeezed. Don't worry, Hawaii. We're going to get into the sad story of some of my swings from last night, too. So, Let's get to that action. Let's go first here. As I'm seeing JPM just get a big, big downturn there, team. Oh, my God. I don't know what's happening, team. I'm still short JPM right now, so I'm trying to take some profits. Definitely would have been taking some towards 128s here. I'm going to take some right now just to pay myself as we've seen this big downside action come in here, team. Didn't expect this to happen immediately here. Let's go ahead and see if I can get back to 128s here. I might just have to take some profits. Man, I, that was a big downturn there. And JPM didn't expect to see it get hit so hard here as it was bouncing back. I was literally talking to you guys as this is happening here. So got to make a call here. I'm going to take some profits right now. Going to look to see if we can come back towards the 128s here. Definitely would have taken a little bit more. I have from 129.52 here as we're coming down here now into the 30s here. Let's just go ahead. We're going to pay ourselves here. Paid myself a little bit more of this, just about a 30% of what I have left. Earlier, I took a 50% profit at the 129. So let's see what happens here. And of course, I will try to bring up my Benzinga Pro to try to go ahead and take a look at what's happening out there. But Definitely something is getting shaken up out there. If you guys see any news, let me know. I'm definitely pulling up the Benzinga Pro to take a look deeper to see if there's anything that I can see. But like always, you guys smash the like. You guys will see Benzinga Pro opening up here. We'll see if I can see anything hitting the news. But definitely something going on here in the banks. I didn't expect a big downturn, but who knows what can happen today. I'm taking some shots on JPM short. I want to tell you guys a little bit about that trade. I was going to get into my losers, but since we're getting such reaction right now, let me see what's going on here at least, see if I can figure it out. Definitely a little bit of a shakeup there. And, of course, I'm short on JPM, so I'm trying to figure this out. Looks like something's coming in here with some financial reports, uh, some form getting in here. I'm trying to get through it. It looks like there's this form that came out on uh, JPM right here at the 255 level, and that's definitely shaking things up. I'm opening it up right now to see what's there. I mean, there's not much there on that news. Let me go ahead and look around, team. You guys see anything? Let me know in the chat. 
Oh, of course, from her it snows. Look at look at the chat. He's already all over it. See my tweet, FDIC moles squeeze big banks hard to plug the 23 billion hole. I'll definitely take a look. Christian from hurts all over it. He's actually going to be joining us in just a few minutes. So excited that we'll have him on. There's the tweet right now. I'm pulling it up here for us. Of course, Christian from hurts really quick on that. And I'm sure his Bloomberg helps a little bit on that. I'm going to have to get on Benzinga pro. We got to get quicker than that. All right. So let's see what happens here. It looks like uh, this is getting put out there and it, yeah, it looks like this was put out on Bloomberg, at least from what he's pulling up here. So it looks like some banks could get hit on this. I'm taking my shot on the banks, at least from what I saw technically wise. Now seeing this makes me feel a little bit more confident, but you guys saw definitely taking some profits and trying to pay myself a little bit there in, uh, of course, JPM. And this could be, you know, a little bit bigger. I need to kind of read through this a little bit more. It seems like there's some more talk here, but definitely uh, getting hit there on that mention. We'll see if this actually continues the downside turn and will the SPY turn here. You can see the SPY has actually been ripping to the upside today and not, hasn't had a bad move on the day for the bullish action. We'll see if the Qs turn around with this, but right now it looks like at least indexes don't look to be turning around too quickly. JPM took the hit there. Uh, let's go to F, uh, FRC, see if that one took a hit there. It, it, it turned around a little bit. Let's go to different banks. Bank of America definitely come pulling back on that mention. Wells Fargo pulling back on that mention. So we'll see what happens on these. Will this actually hold? Now I guess I'll just have to wait to see if I can continue rolling with the momentum here. Of course, this is happening as I speak. So just got to keep watch on JPM. Uh, definitely at least being able to pay myself here, giving me a little bit more confidence. And let's talk about what got me into this trade. Really, this is a trade more set up on the 15 minute for me. I'm going to put this a little bit bigger so you guys can see this and put myself on the bottom corner here. So really, I was watching this pattern develop all day and I was watching how the banks were kind of rejecting. Earlier in the day, I was able to day trade some of this action with FAZ, of course, leverage vehicle. Um, but as I started seeing this kind of topping action here, I could see the drawing action and I could see, you know, kind of my rule of three. I'll talk a little bit about that, right? So a lot of times I get a down action, down one, up one, down two, up two, down three. Was looking to see if we were going to get a move back here towards the two uh, 129.61s. And then I could see this little kind of like hanging man here at the top of the ascending triangle. That's when I started getting short as I started seeing this rejection here on the 129.50s. Was able to get short off of that. Now looking for the continuation to the downside of that triangle. When we got the break of that, was already looking for 129. That was the intended target on the first profits as we came down there. Right here, breaking towards the 129. Was able to take some profits. And now you're really starting to see the acceleration. Now the only question is, will it continue? So what I'm going to do is do what I do best, right? Let the market now work for me and not me work for the market. What does that mean? I'm going to be break even on the rest, 129.52. So we can let this try to work to see if it can crack down 128 again. Definitely, if I would have seen 128 crack, probably would have taken some profits there, but not too mad at 128.40s on this downside action. We'll see if this can continue. All right, catching up there. Uh, a lot of action, of course. This is how the start swing trading is going to go. Sometimes we're going to get some action right as we're taking a look. We'll see what happens on the market overall and to see if we get a downturn in the SPY. Earlier, we did start seeing a little bit of some turn action, but that was quickly resolved. Right now, if we could stay above 400, I'll look to see if that, if, if that is what happens towards the close here. And then if, if not, we could crack 400 come right back towards this kind of 399 where we bounced off of earlier. All right, let's take a look at the market overall. I can get into some of the losses that I had earlier, but I, I don't think anybody cares too much about that. It was, of course, uh, a loss on XOM. Of course, this morning I came in the morning and it was already spiking in the pre-market. So I was able to cut that. Now, the one that I did get hit right out the gates was Google. Now, Google definitely, this one was a, a tough one because as, as the market opened, it was actually coming down. So I just covered it into that first down action. But 
if I would have left it towards that first kind of like 10, 15 minutes, I probably would have been able to get my money right back and, and kind of break even. But that's how it happens, team. Sometimes you're going to win some. Sometimes you're going to lose some. We'll see what happens here towards the close. Does Google just give up and come right back down here towards the lows? I saw a video with an interesting setup earlier, and then now it's trying to get towards the 270s. We'll just continue on the upside. Definitely technology still staying strong, right? I mean, that's one thing that I'm keeping an eye on. Look at this Sox L, bull, definitely nice takeoff now towards the 1726. It's an interesting day to say the least. Let's go taking a look underneath the hood. Technology having a good day there. Solar continuing strong and actually getting a nice little uplift. ENPH bouncing back after cracking, right? This was, this was actually pretty weak. Now it's starting to come back here from the 200s. Of course, I'm watching the leader right now in my eyes, which is First Solar, pushing through the highs, almost back here towards this kind of closing price here. So we could run into some resistance right around this 215.50 area, but then we'll look to see if we can get above it towards the 220s. And this is First Solar. We'll see what happens there. And definitely smash up the like if you guys are tuning in. What's going on, chicken? What's up, Kurt? Uh, Captain Kirk? <laughs> How we doing out there? All right, let's get to the action. You guys leave some stocks for me when we get to some ticker time. I'm going to keep rolling. And, of course, we got Christian Fromhertz coming on at 3.30. So we only got about 15 minutes for that. So let's roll up the sleeve. Let's take a look out there to see what else we can see underneath the hood. Semiconductors today getting some lift. We just talked about those. Micron was one that I will let you guys know that I was thinking about swinging this one. I was able to make a really nice trade on this today, and it turned out to just be a day trade because when it pulled back, it got close towards my break even, and I kind of got out of it. I, I didn't want to stick around. So uh, Micron around 11 um, after I started seeing the market kind of reverse out of this pattern here, I took my shot right around here in the 6, 6232s and was looking for this to kind of keep pushing. But I, I only was able to get the profits towards the 63s. So I took majority of the profits towards that 63, but was wanting to hold the rest of it for a 6350. And then who knows? It could have maybe got to the 64. So I didn't know at that point. But 6350s was like kind of my top target. This one actually kept going. Look at it now. Really nice move here on Micron. Pulling back here. Now back towards 64.24. So that just goes to show you. And I, overall, Micron didn't have the best earnings. But that didn't matter. It still pushed higher. What platform is this, Chris? Um, you're looking at me use TC2000 here. Uh, it's my favorite charting system. But like always, I'm always pulling my news and kind of reactions on what's going on with Benzinga Pro. You guys can check out that. And TC2000 It's a little bit of an older charting service, but I like using kind of the one pager here for me that I can go through the market. All right, let's keep going. Uh, MU and in Intel. Of course, the bottom of the barrel chip names. Hey, it doesn't matter, right? They were the first to warn, but now they're starting to get moving. And this actually looks good. I remember when Micron was down here and all the Texan names uh, were starting to take off. Micron playing catch up. I would take a look at Marvell. Marvell was playing catch up also with this similar move. It started getting moving there. If they could come in with good earnings and it didn't even need an earnings report today, look at this Look at this move. Nice little uplift there. Going to continue to watch this one. But if Micron could keep moving, I think Marvell can just keep playing catch up with this one. Not a bad little move there in Marvell technology. And we were looking at this one with Option Mike, right? Not looking too bad. Can't swing on Weeble or others like it. Um. I mean, you can still swing trade on Weeble. Um, what, what are you looking for, Chris? I'm a little confused, but hey, Chris, always here to help you out if you need some questions. Uh, all right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other stocks there. Definitely Marvell having a good day there. Um, we'll keep watch to see some of the semiconductor equipment stocks because those also are strong. I don't know if you guys know this stock, but LRCX, right? Lamb Research. Nice move back up there towards the 518s. Big push up. I'm going to keep a watch on these to see if they're going to continue pushing higher. But it looks similar like the market. Held that pullback. Now starting to push higher. 
I think this also has to do with kind of the the, the chip trade and what's going to happen there. Are we going to see more restrictions from the U.S.? Will they affect the LAM research? You can see it's trying to push higher today. We'll see how these names continue to push higher. But I'll tell you one thing. Technology, technology, technology has really been strong, especially since kind of the beginning of the year. I mean, yeah, we had a little bit of a pullback, but we're almost right back up there. And I think that we need to keep watch on this because – if technology takes off, especially some of the bigger boys, if they could take off, they can continue just driving us higher. And I know that the Apple move is one that I'm definitely looking at. And ever since it started breaking through this like kind of 157, and I'll take away the numbers so we can just see the chart. Ever since we actually started breaking through that level, I've looked at this kind of as a bullish chart and I don't see this any other, uh, I don't see this turning anytime soon, right? And so I think that's definitely something we need to keep a watch on. As we broke through this trend line, can we get back there to 170 and even be maybe a potentially all time high there on Apple? Why can't you get there? That's one thing that I'd keep in mind, especially if the bank trade goes away. Q's ripping. Let's take a look there. Jay giving us a little bit of a warning. Let's take a look. There you see it. Oh, man. The Q's are pushing here. 312.95. Is Tesla pushing? Did we get to 200 yet? Oh, it's just starting to push here as this one's kind of been lagging a little bit. A little part of me wants to risk off this 190. If we can think if we think that the market isn't going to break down, if we can continue to run in these tech names, Tesla doesn't look too bad here. Since I didn't, didn't have this as a planned trade, I'm not going to take it right now, but it does look good here as it stayed strong. And we still got about, what, almost 40 minutes for the market. This could really continue driving. We'll see what happens. What happened to that JPM? Look at this team. Look how quickly it comes back here. So it looks like we're almost back above the VWAP here. We came right back towards 129. Of course, didn't want to see that because I'm short on it, but just going to keep a watch on it. Not going to let this become a loser, right? We got in from 129.52. We've already taken some pretty decent profits on the day, right? We took a half, then we took a, a, a third. So just got a little bit left on this position. We'll see if this actually squeezed me out with this up style move. And this is how this market has been. You get those rips in a direction. A lot of times we're getting retracements and then you can maybe see if you get continuation. But right now it hasn't been given much on the continuation side. And look at the SPY now towards 401. This is a big move. I'll say right now, I mean, the SPY doesn't look like we're in bank concerns. But that's what we got to think about, right? We'll see if any of this turns around. Let's keep going. Let's take a look. What else in the banks? Uh, what else in the sectors today? Uh, we got consumer cyclical reversing. Of course, you guys can keep on that. Utilities, we've continued to see that strong. So not going to talk too much about that. The cyclical names are interesting, of course. You got a lot of different names here getting some lift today. Footwear and accessories was interesting as I did make a day trade on Nike today. That's continuing on the upside. I could see kind of a hammer candle or some people were calling it a, a dragonfly doji on, on Nike, but nice little uplift. And I was really just trying to play a little bit of some sympathy off of that Lululemon report. And it wasn't a bad move. Pretty decent. Lulu pulled back. Nike kind of got the lift there. I'm going to continue to watch to see if this can continue pushing, but not a bad move there for Nike on the uplift. Of course, uh, we were able to get this one and maybe could have held on for the swing, but I just played it for the intraday action. It wasn't a bad move. All right. Don't forget, it's the last day of the quarter tomorrow. We could see some kind of window dressing, things like that. Um, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be diff difficult to kind of tell which way the market's going to go. And that's the way I feel lately. I haven't been feeling like I know exactly where we're going, but I can tell you right now, the market's strong, man. The market is strong. All right. Uh, what else is being mentioned out there? Uh, what, are the, what are the stocks you guys are talking about? Let's go ahead. We just trimmed Sox out. Hey, can't blame you, Easy. That that probably was a big rip there. Sox out. Ooh, 1740s. Not a bad move there. That's continuing to rip. And that's that's a nice move there. And I think that's we got to catch it, right? I mean, technology, just stay staying strong. And even like uh, Microsoft that was starting to turn around, Google that was starting to turn around, look at these moves. They're reclaiming that nine e EMA. 
and really going for the resistance move for the breakout, essentially. I mean, I know that we're in a little bit of concern in the kind of overall banking situation, but if we keep shaking that, we could keep ripping. Overall, I know I've been pointing towards the SPY and how a lot of times when you get a golden cross, you do get some quick declining action after that, and then you get a takeoff. It looks like we're in takeoff mode, but the only question is how long will this last and will there be some bank concerns around the, around the turn, right? Will we see something come up? Right now, it seems like they're shaking it. They're shaking it, that's for sure. All right, let's go to some stocks from the chat. We got about eight minutes left before we get Kristen Fromhertz on. So I'll let you guys throw some names. If you guys have got anything you want to take a look at, go ahead and throw it up. I see Wolf mentioned out there. This is one that's turning around. Petco. I'm wondering, will Petco ever get moving? I thought they were going to do pretty decent uh, coming back out. I mean, it's everywhere, right? I mean, I see Petco's everywhere. But at the end of the day, it just seems like they can't get a hold of their margins. They can't kind of get even back. I mean, this IPO'd up there towards 25. It's $8 now, right? I mean, less than half. So we'll see if this could ever really get moving. Intel did have a nice day. Uh, that one pushed higher through the 30s. Looks like it's reversing. Looks like they're going after the lagging effect in the semiconductor names, right? So the names that haven't gone, they're just going after them, right? They first started with like a Micron. They went with like a Marvell, right? Then they started going after names like Intel, right? I mean, look at the action as of late. Kind of just started taking off. Now really starting to push. Look at some other names. I'm even looking at maybe, maybe even Beamer continues to get a lift, right? They, if they're going to go after all of them, they might even go after Beamer here. So I'm keeping an eye on names like this. This could are taking off. I'm looking at it right now. How's it doing right now on the 15? Looks like it is getting a little bit of an uplift. And holding yesterday's kind of low action, uh, you did get a little bit of a downturn towards the close. But uh, IBM, not looking too bad there either. All right, let's see what else is doing well on the day. There's a lot of strength around. And what do you see here? You see all green and all green from the open. That just goes to show us how uh, much of a kind of like an everything rally we're having on the day. Even defensives are up on the day. Healthcare, definitely an area that I'm keeping an eye on to see if we keep getting a run in some of these major drug manufacturers. Uh, just going to keep an eye on to see if that trade could really kind of present itself and, and actually get moving. I did see some of these names kind of rebound a little bit like Johnson and Johnson. We'll see if this actually can come back. Keeping an eye on this kind of floating Island with MVS, but that's enough for that action. You guys in the chat, what other ones you guys got? Let's grab a couple more here. Uh, UVXY. I see you guys talking about that. Uh, I don't even, let's see if I got that. Should have it there. There he goes down there to 465. That's going lower and lower here. Let's zoom in there. You guys can see how that's coming down. Doesn't look good. It keeps coming down. And of course, this is the ultra short. Um, so we'll see. Definitely coming down there to the 465s. What do you see there, Captain? You let me know. All right. Uh, what other ones being mentioned? BLDR. Hmm. This is one we talked about in the past here. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Last time we talked about this uh, was about March 3rd. And I, I know that Christian was looking at this one too. Let's, we'll, we'll get a little bit of an update on this one, but it's continued to push. It pulled back there. Now getting that next lift here. And I like how it came back and quickly bounced off of that 80 back up towards the 86. We'll look to see if we can get to that 90, but not a bad stock and continuing the drive, right? Continuing the trend, at least on this one. All right, that's going to do it for my outlook. I could definitely take a look at some other ones. Just going to really quickly peek in on JPM to see how that's happened, uh, what's going on there. Um, we're still right off the view app, so we'll look to see if I get some down action. But, of course, if it comes back through my entry, I'll just get out of the name. We'll see if we can get that down action back towards that 128. That was a good quick little flush. But like always, got to be quick. And sometimes you got to be quicker than that, right? It got me a little bit. Was able to take some profit at least. We'll see what happens now. All right, getting out of my charts. Going to go ahead and go to my guest. Like always, you guys 
If you guys want to talk about any stocks that you guys hear Christian Fombert's mention, go ahead and let me know in the chat. We can expand upon these, but I'll keep letting him flow and give us ideas that he's looking at. Let's go ahead and bring him on. How are we doing today, Christian? Hey, how's it going? How you doing, Mitch? Doing great, man. Uh, fast market like always, you know, and of course, sometimes some closes faster than others. Look like we got some action there from a quick little mention in the banks. Now bouncing back a little bit. What do you hear about the banking situation at least? Well, it's kind of, I mean, every day is, uh, you know, you're kind of waiting either for a headline or to see if the volatility comes in. So um, I'm kind of noticing a little bit more today of some call buying that's happening. Like we really haven't seen that much. It's been more um, put sell. There's been some put selling in some names. Uh, there has been some pit put buying in some names as well, but you really haven't, like I've been watching to see if like people are really are, are, are at the point where they're starting to take shots on the long side for the banks. Um, and I tell you, it's, I mean, it's been pretty quiet today though. We did see something that I thought was interesting. Uh, this is PACW. Uh, you know, so that the option activity does a really good job at like, you know, if, if you're thinking about like buying the dip or, or even, you know, pressing shorts, um, it's really nice to kind of, uh, you know, the option activity could be a pretty good tool to give you a sense of if people are starting to take shots on some things. I mean, th so mm -hmm. this is another one that's really beaten up, right? This is the PacWest Bank Corp. It's in that uh, bucket of, of really like, like watch out, be careful, you know, banks and so forth. I mean, it's really gotten depressed, but they went and they bought just this week's, uh, da, 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 this week's. So March 31st, nine and a half calls for 40 cents. So again, they're not really going out and like really, you know, nobody's sticking out their neck, it seems. And, you know, going and, and putting like on a big chunky position. Um, so this is something that um, somebody's taking a really small shot at. And, and maybe it was on that headline about the bigger banks. Um, and I also watch option. I also watch ETF fund flows, too. Uh, there was a like last week the biggest inflow of any ETF. Don't don't get excited about this though. <laughs> was <laughs> uh, was XLF did see a one billion dollar inflow, but it's mm -hmm. that's such it's such a big ETF that one billion dollars isn't that big of a deal. Um, I've also been watching KRE to see if there's any fund flows there. Yeah. The, um, there really there hasn't been much. There, there's been slight inflow into that, but sometimes it, it could be a little bit deceiving with ETF fund flows because they also do. Um, creations again. This is kind of getting in the weeds, uh, but <laughs> it, they also do creations for what's called um, creating to lend. So they can create more shares if there's really a demand. There's if there's a heavy demand to short, um, they can do that. So so it's kind of tough. You want to you know you want to kind of put that to, together with like if you've seen block trades, and then you can kind of say, okay, well that was a buy and that was an inflow. But um, so to, the answer to your long-winded answer to your question, but it's a good question because. I think a lot of, you know, I think that's the, that is the, everybody's a, you know, it's the next, I don't want to say shoot a drop, but it's the expression that comes to mind is like, yeah. Hey, are we going to see any other damage? And, and um, uh, again, going back to the option flow, it gives kind of a good indicator. Schwab is one, one other name I'll just put on your radar because mm -hmm. that has been seeing some put selling. Um, I actually put on a little bit of a call spread in this and Schwab. Like I haven't done anything with the bank since this whole thing has started because I'm more of a trend trader. I, I don't, you know, I don't take shots at, you know, buying the dip and things like this uh, because once these things kind of go into a downtrend, it's for me, it's like hands off, but that doesn't, you know, and again, it's an, I'm not trying to plug options here. I wasn't, wasn't intending to do that, but if you want to take a small shot on something, you could do a call spread, you know, something of that nature. And, um, you know, this way you're only risking that you only have the risk of the premium. Right. And that's that's the easiest way, I think, to kind of take a shot at one of these uh, names that you may really like um, is to maybe put on a call spread. The, the the spread minimizes the the implied, you know, because the implied volatility is jacked up. So it, the options are expensive in these names. So if you buy uh, a, a near term strike and sell further out of the one, you can minimize that um, really juiced implied volatility, expensive, um, you know, implied volatility in options. So. 
How's that? that one, one, one question, and I go on for for five minutes. Sorry. I, I mean, you you covered the you covered it all. That's that. I mean, there's nothing to apologize, Christian. That's what I wanted to hear. At least Get, put some answers to the questions out there, because so, at the end of the day, there's a lot of uncertainty, and just traders don't know. There, it's almost like binary right now. It is. So what was the, I didn't hear the thesis on your JP Morgan short trade. So it, it, honestly, I was just looking at it technically and I could see kind of like a hanging man on like the 15 minute and we were just hanging around there. We've hung around there all day long. I could see that like, you know, it's not moving up. It's not moving down. And I'm just almost at the point where I was like, man, there has to be some news coming. And, and it could definitely react either way. But I was just looking at the 15 minute uh, chart. And I could see kind of a little little setup here kind of coming in here. Once I started seeing this kind of hanging man candle, that's where I just took a little shot for the 129, kind of a little breakdown. But the big thing for me was that I don't know what's going on with these banks. Yeah. And that's why I think that it's very difficult to hold them overnight. Either way, we could sure. have a rip yep. up. We could have a rip down, right? And I mean, that that's where it gets very difficult, especially overnight action. And maybe you could play it on the intraday action and that's the way i've been kind of going about it with the banks i haven't played it since a short on morgan stanley on that first thursday where we kind of cracked like you know big from this uh down gap that i was going after at 95 but i took another shot on jpm today we'll see what happens it was a really quick one so yeah if, no. if you didn't get that that first move it was tough down there and, and you bring up a great point too. I mean, I, listen, this market is hard enough to trade on its own, but yeah. now with these banks, you're, you're adding uh, what's called event risk too, because or headline risk is probably exactly. the better term because you do have you know that headline that I that I posted like you know 15 minutes ago, you know that really drove. So you you don't know there's all these meetings going on behind the scenes. So you're you know you're making a even in my opinion a very difficult market to trade just in you know overall and if you're really um, playing around in that group, um, you're just adding another layer of risk, in my opinion. 100%. And, I, and, I, and I've tried to say, you know, these it, right now, it's almost like it's a high risk, high reward, right? And I don't, I don't ever like playing both sides of those games. If, it, if you can control the risk, then yeah. But the truth is, is we don't know when a tape bomb could come in and all of a sudden something hit and then you see drops like we saw in JPM right now. We don't right. know if that could have kept going, right? I mean, and then that's the same thing right now. I'm sure some people may have, might have reacted on that first down candle and gone, you know, short even on that candle. And that's how you can get trapped, right? Right now, it's very difficult. You got to stay really, I'm, I'm calling it nimble. You got to be nimble, flexible right now because the change is all over the place. Now, I did see one tweet that uh, I think you were maybe celebrating today about the Yes Network. <laughs> You're gonna get some baseball, Christian. I am a Yankees fan, uh, although that's a very high price streaming service. So um, yeah, a little, a little you know, high price. Of I, course, the Yes uh, Network launching their own streaming service. It seems like the regional sports are really trying to do this more often to yeah. at least include people that don't, you know, have cable and still well, want to watch their sports. Right? There was a comment from from my training room, which I, I thought was spot on. It was just saying, "Hey, you gotta you gotta pay for this uh, judge contract uh, somehow, some way." <laughs> some shape or form so I, I i agree with that so hey hey who knows maybe he breaks it again this year you never do, know uh, right can i share my screen can i let's go over do some it charts? Let's, let's let's do those right, uh, let's, i know um, you were looking at them earlier so let's get them up here and let's dive a little deeper into different plays out there all, all right, right getting so, you up now so I very much look at um, what's, you know, I, I have my own indicator that I use that I've developed with someone and, and I look at volume at price. And um, so I, I've actually, let me bring up the cues because um, of course, like, um, you know, outside of the banks, there, there's a lot of interesting things going on. Um, you know, so I, I think it's kind of interesting what's happening here is we're, now breaking outside of what's known as the valuary for March. I know we only have a couple more days of March, but what that means is, um, you know, Mar the March valuary is based on all the volume and price um, going back from February. And that provides a really good resistance support level for us to kind of trade around. But we hesitated um, last week with breaking out of this value area. And, um, you know, it 
you have to keep in mind and put things in perspective is that we made such a nice move from basically the 200 day moving average to the, you know, all the way through to the, to the top of the value area. So, you know, a little bit of hesitation or, or consolidation, um, you know, I, I think was needed, but I like when, you know, I, I see some people were talking about, oh, well, it could be a double top in the queues. I'm like, well, let's give it a second, you know, give it a chance to kind of digest a little bit. And, um, you know, we've got a real nice move here up 1.9% for the queues. Yeah. And, um, you know, also, you know, you look at the one hour time frame and you can see that we're trying to break through here as well. So <laughs> one other chart to look at too is, you know, you have, you finally have some small caps that are participating too. So when you, when you look at the, um, the queues equally weighted, because, you know, that's been a valid argument that I've heard the last couple of weeks is like, oh, it's the mega cap you know, uh, tech that's been rallying. Um, and it, it sure has, you know, once we heard about this banking situation, um, there was kind of this flight to safety going into the large cap, uh, tech or, or, you know, the, the top heavy queues. Um, but now we're starting to see some of the, um, the smaller cap, you know, the QQEW is, is the same thing, same names that are in the queues, but equally weighted. And you start to see this participate a bit too. So I, I view this as a pretty good sign. Um, the breath is super strong today yeah. too, which um, I think a lot of people have been kind of waiting and watching for um, the breath to kind of start to play a role and looking at like the McClellan summation index for, uh, you know, for a signal there. But, mm -hmm. you know, let's see if this kind of continue can continue through the end of the month and uh, maybe to April, which is a strong seasonal month. But I mean, this is, as, you know, as strong as, you know, very strong uh, day. You've got 468 advancers versus 35 decliners. So, um, you know, this, this is a, this is a very strong breath day. And um, I think a good sign for the market as we get closer to the end of the month. Definitely a good sign of the market. Of course, uh, you got some questions in the chat about quarter ending and how that could be maybe coming into play right now. Do you feel yep. that that's coming into play, Christian? I mean, it definitely could. I mean, that, that's always a uh, that's always a good question. But you know, unless you know what like the pension funds are doing, um, you know, I, I, there's no major like it's not a it's not a monthly option expiration. So it's more yeah. of a sense of like if the if the big pensions, the portfolio, you know, big portfolio funds, um, if they're going to be doing some changing around, you know, then you could get that end of month volatility, um, you know, which, which again, could be contributing to a little bit of what we're seeing, uh, you know, as we get closer to the end of the week. But, you know, that's just one thing going on too. And, um, you know, I, I think really to kind of pay attention to what happens to once we start the beginning of the month, um, I think is, is going to be important because, um, you know, as said, it's, it's a typically, it's a, stronger seasonal month, April. Um, so if we're starting to kind of make strides with breath improving, mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to get a, a bit more bullish um, as we kind of come out of this. And um, just kind of, I'm looking at the VIX on one screen too, yeah. which is below 20, which has been kind of a, a contrarian indicator. Like people have been using that to say, you know, okay, every time this thing gets down to 20, it's it's been a good time to say, okay, take your profits um, because volatility might be coming. But what's a little bit different here, look at the spy chart is we really haven't had a rally yet. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there's, you know, I mean, this has been back and forth you know, with the 200 day moving average and it's still at the 50 day moving average. So these, I think other situations where we've seen the VIX kind of, okay, get to that 19 level, 20 level, we've already had a big run. I, I don't think that we've had a big run. So I, I'm not sure if like you, that contrarian indicator is going to, you know, come into play saying, okay, you know, the VIX was at, you know, in the mid twenties, now it's at 20. So I think yeah. really what's important to, you know, other than of course, you know, watching that breath is, or most important is, is watching what's going on in the price action in, in individual names. And um, I thought we could go over, you know, just a couple things that I think are interesting. Let's do it. Um, the sem I'll start with the semiconductors, right? Yeah, they super strong. Yes, they, they were super strong for the for the last couple of weeks, just like, um, you know, big cap tech. Um, and they kind of, you know, they sold off the last couple of days. And, you know, I think that they saw a little bit of profit taking, a little bit of rotation. You know, we we have had thin breath up until the last couple of days. So when that's a, that's a little bit dangerous when you have one area that's kind of leading. But I'm impressed with this move back after a couple of days of selling off. 
uh, it's really difficult to get bearish on a group when after, you know, a couple of days of pullback, it's back up 3.4% um, as a group. So um, I even got a little bit too heavyweight that group my, myself, um, you know, and, and I took off one one name yesterday, but I kind of just consolidated and I still like NVIDIA. I know it's up a lot. People keep saying, oh, my God, NVIDIA is up this close. You know, it's up this much this year. But yeah, um, I, I always try to say keep your eyes on the road ahead. Don't worry about what happened in the past. Um, I ultimately have a $300 price target. You can see that red line up there. Um, that's where I think NVIDIA is going, which is, you know, the, I think the right play on AI, if you're going to make a play in that, in that group. And um, again, it doesn't mean it's going to get there in a straight line, but I added a little bit on a dip yesterday and I'm, I'm doing okay with it um, so far today. So um, that's what I'm ult ultimately looking at in this group. And, you know, instead of having three or four different plays on um, within the group, I kind of consolidated it a little bit. Um, I think Rambus is also um, one hell of a move today. And, you know, you look at this and you might think, oh, Jesus. Well, it, I mean, this is a big move. It's up 9%. Yeah. But, um, you know, it hasn't really gone anywhere in about what, um, since the middle of February, right? It kind of dipped, right? And kind of moved higher. And a couple of these things, like Cirrus Logic is another one, um, which is making a new high today too. After, sorry, sometimes uh, thinker swim charts they go a little bit slow when I've got too many applications going. Um, we'll try this again. But there you go. I mean, it's kind of spent some mm -hmm. time wobbling around here, going sideways, and um, I mean that's one heck of a chart too, up four point five percent. So. Uh, you know, even if you're not in some of these things, right, or don't feel like you want to take a position up here, um, I just think it's it's overall um, a good sign that semis are are doing what they're doing. So again, you can kind of pick pick and choose some of these names. Um, what's what's the other one that I've got on? Uh, well, the other one that I was looking at was AMD, um, which you know went right up to this. This was a name that I was in a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, has basically stalled out here at the virgin point of control, but looks like it's kind of getting re ready to go again. Yeah. I mean, you could see the 95s are somebody wants it below the 95s. Um, the last couple of days, you could see those little cut throughs and recovery there. I feel like it can hold 95. Why not 100 again? Um, so I think it's really impressive the, the amount of strength that you've been seeing in the semiconductor names. And then also you saw Micron today, and I don't think that was the best report. I don't know how you feel about the report, Christian, but it seemed like they still, it didn't matter. Yeah. Well, I think I, I don't, I don't usually trade. I'm surprised to think this thing's up 8%. I think what um, I, I didn't play, I didn't pay that much attention to this one because I don't yeah. usually play Micron. Um, but I think the price action is telling, you know, perhaps the bad news is kind of past the name, right? That's mm -hmm. what the price action sometimes tells us, even for, a, you know, one of the most bullish things that you could see some, sometimes, I don't want to say all the time, but yeah. is when a name, when a name has a bad report and they actually rally on it. Uh, I know that doesn't make, sometimes it's, it's, it's a little bit hard to comprehend, but you have to remember when, when a name reports earnings, they're telling you what happened on the previous quarter. Right. So I think their guidance was OK. Um, and I think that's what people are um, taking out of the report. But, you know, for any report, when they tell you when they give you the numbers, the EPS and the sales, right, I think it's one of the most um, it's one of the most con confused things by investors is they sometimes hear and same same thing when a company beats on earnings. Right. If they beat on earnings, well, that's telling you what happened in the past. Right. It really you're going to get more information from their earnings call and from what they think about their guidance. So if they're already coming from, you know, the last couple of quarters, I believe. And again, this isn't a name that I that I trade. Um, so I don't pay that much attention to it. But I know yeah. that they brought in their numbers for like the last couple quarters. And the stock's been going sideways. So perhaps what this is telling you is the worst is over for Micron. Yeah. And I mean, it just overall, it just seems like anywhere you look in, in these bigger kind of tech names and especially even the, the big caps overall, just if you just looked at an Apple, right? I mean, is that showing us kind of a bear market outlook there? I, I just don't see bear market there. <laughs> yeah, right? and, and I know you're, you've been on the more bear side, correct? Recently? Yeah, exactly, right. Christian. And, and I just started recently kind of flipping a little bit over as soon as the Fed kind of switched their outlook. And then 
I know that everyone's yelling about the banks, but I just don't see it. Well, I, I mean, the, the the one thing too that you know we debated this in our in our trading room when this happened, and my argument was this could be a positive thing for the growth stocks, and and it has been um, because you're you're essentially like you're putting the Fed in a spot where you know if you go back to before this happened with the banks like they were looking at raising interest rates three or four more times this year right it got to yeah. the point where um you know and the market sold off on that news originally when powell testified in front of congress but now you're looking at their their arms are tied so with this situation so that's one area that i think is you know i'm i'm taking it as a positive that they're not going to be raising interest rates if they do maybe it's one more 25 basis point um, which, you know, at this point is, is not that big of you know, when you're, when you're at 5%, it's not that big of a, another 25 basis points here or there isn't going to really matter too much. Um, it's just the fact, I think that, um, you know, maybe they're finally taking their foot off the, uh, the gas pedal and, um, you know, that should be, you know, even though it's a 5% rate, um, that you're getting on your cash, um, with like T-bills and so forth, right? That's still not a great picture for all stocks, but um, at least it kind of alleviates the the pressure of future hikes. And, and you know, we'll see if that changes, but for now that's, that's what Fed Fund Futures are pricing. All right, we've got about two or three minutes left here with you. Any last, uh, any last stocks you want to bring up or last focus you want to get on? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, we talked about the semis and I have to say that the software names are, are acting really well. I, st you know, I'll give you a couple of names that, that I um, have either added. Workday mm -hmm. is one of them. Um, this, this again, was, was an idea from, uh, from, geez, I don't know. I hate when Thinkorswim does this, but um, <laughs> this was a, um, this was an idea uh, from, from one of my members. And um, you could see, like, I, I love this little, um, so first of all, the first thing that I see in a chart like this is that the name is moving higher, right? It's mm -hmm. above the 200 day moving average. It's above these other moving averages. Um, Workday had pretty decent earnings a couple of weeks back, but it's kind of just been going sideways. So I love the break higher out of like, you know, a sideways period could be a couple of weeks, could be, a, you know, a couple months. Um, and I like that nice break higher. Um, so that's Workday. I, I had hubs up on the screen too, which mm -hmm. I can't get into all of them, but I do like this, uh, this hubs, which also uh, HubSpot had good earnings too. And they, and they've, you know, this was all the way back in here. Um, but ultimately I think this thing can get up to four, 440, 443 that lines up on multiple timeframes, right? So here's your uh, resistance right here. Um, and then also um, a, a beauty products here. I like Ulta here. Um, and I, um, I put on a position here. Um, it's pushing back a little bit here, but as long as it kind of holds in here at 528, um, it looks very close to that ELF breakout that, we, that we've been seeing as well. Yeah, uh, ELF, really nice uh, move also, right? I mean- Come on, you gotta I, look good, Mitch, right? I you know, mean, hey, you, you gotta, gotta smell good, good, good the too. They got, they got the good colognes in there, man. That's where you get the good <laughs> stuff. We're not talking about that little cheap stuff you get at Walmart, right? <laughs> Doing those squats, you gotta look good, right? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. And you know what's one tip that was told to me, Christian, that I didn't really think about? Yeah. Well, it, for Ulta, you know it's included in Targets, right? They got that partnership where when you go into Target, there's a whole section that's essentially Ulta. Right, right. And I think yeah. that that gives them a little bit of advantage, right? You don't even need to go to the mall. They're they're out there doing the grocery shopping <laughs> and then just grabbing some makeup right there. Right. So, hey, you never know. And I think one of the things that's really interesting is asking around. I asked my wife about that. She told me about it. I was like, what? All right. Well, I, I guess I guess you can see why they're – you don't even need to go to the mall. You don't need to go to the store. You can go to a Target and still be shopping at Ulta. So uh, not, not too go. bad. Appreciate you coming on, bringing different stocks. You guys check out Christian, like always. I'm going to throw up the link so you guys can check out Tribeca Trading Group. And we'll see you next time, Christian. Take care, man. Thanks very much, Mitch. Have a great day. Always great to have Christian from Hertz. You guys check him out. I'll definitely make sure that we go ahead and get his uh, link up right now. I want to go ahead and share that with you guys so that you guys can check out Tribeca Trade Group for yourself. What I always love, and I'm, I saw the mention in the chat, definitely got to give the shout out there. I love seeing the, the recap videos also. So if you guys have never checked out uh, Christian Fomhurt's recap videos, definitely check them out. I saw the, the comment in the chat a little bit earlier. Um, so definitely, if you guys don't see those, give them a follow on Twitter and then check them out. I even just enjoy that. Even if you don't join his group, 
check out those recaps. Let's get back to the market. I'm seeing right now JPM finally coming a little bit back down here, but man, the spy is just ripping and I, I, I see it just shaking the wall of worry and it's, it's crazy to think, but if this market could just keep running, who knows what could happen? We could be at 410, 420. I've always talked about it. We get to 420, it's a new bull market. So it's really hard to kind of catch it up. All right. Uh, don't say throw up. That has a different meaning. Yeah, that's a good one. Good comment there, Joe. All right, let's take a look there. Spy going a little bit higher. Let's go towards these tech names. They definitely had a really good day. Um, definitely seeing that Apple move as a really good positive for the market overall. AMD pushed higher as it was down there towards the uh, kind of the lows earlier. Even at 2 p.m., it was still below the VWAP. Got a nice lift there with that move. This is one stock that's going to be on my radar team. I feel like it's already made too big of a move today as it started to move up. But overall, Unity, if we are going to see these software names start making its way back, this is one that I'll keep an eye on. It definitely is reversing right now, so it's nothing that I'll look at right now. But hey, can we recover this kind of bearish candle? Can we get through 30s? Doesn't look too bad. ARKK names not looking too bad. Overall, some of these growth names are really starting to move. Shop, getting a nice little push. This came back into the 40 zone, now pushing back up there towards 46. Is this one that we want to keep an eye out for, right? Tesla starting to push a little bit higher. Will this get there back towards 200? There's so much to think a look at. BTU on the halt? Hmm. I don't know what's going on there, uh, Kareem. If, if I did, I would definitely take a look. Let me see if there's anything that I can at least mention from Benzinga Pro here. Uh, BTU, let's see. Why is this halted? Uh, pending news. That's all I got, man. And pending news are scary. I didn't expect to hear this, but yeah, BTU, pending news. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, I have my foot uh, footprint closed at the moment. We'll see. So not quite the eyes I usually have, but I will understand closing up here. Can't say I love it. Um, it's a tough day. Tough day indeed. We'll see what happens. EMPH, will that continue higher? Man, Solar Names getting a nice little lift today, up about 3.52, the industry overall. And I like one mention that you heard also from Christian Farmhurst about trying to look at things unweighted or equally weighted, right? Uh, and so this is why I look at my sector outlooks from TC2000 often because they are just that. They're not weighted in the bigger names. I think that's important. Too many people look at like the Qs and they just think about that it represents all of tech names. The truth is it's going to represent the top names, right? Just like uh, let's say the SPY overall, it's kind of the top names, right? That really move the market. And a day like today, you got Amazon up 1.72%. That one recovering 100. This one doesn't look bad. It just starts coming back. It hasn't really partake in, in the, the rally here. Um, so we'll see if this kind of starts really kind of pushing here through the 101 11s. And can we just continue to climb and climb? Because right now, I'm not seeing the bank concerns, even though we did get that downside action there in JPM. Going to look to see what happens in the last couple of minutes here. But it's not looking too great. Might just take the profit and run. I'm still in the green from 129.50s, but I really don't know what's going to happen with this bank trade. That's where it gets difficult, team. I don't think I want to be overnighted. I just, I'm just not feeling it, right? And so as we get really close here towards four, I'll look to see if we can get at least another little uh, couple of cents declining here. But I'm going to go ahead and take the money and run in JPM. Uh, I like BLDR. It's bullish. Yeah, BLDR. Let's take a look there. That one's been uh, a pretty decent one on the day, starting to recover. Daily chart has pushed a little bit higher. I'd look for pullbacks to 85 for it to kind of keep just climbing, uh, but doesn't look too bad. It's a building materials name. That's something I know about too much. I don't know too much about building materials, but it's how it is. Feel like setting up the wiffle ball on the tee. We'll see what happened. I'm actually going to the batting cages, Walter. So I'll see if I can hit a home run or two. Uh, let's see what else is going on in the market. See what else I got for you guys right here towards the close. The SPY overall. Let's see the, some of the biggest movers is some of those changed up. FRC, what happened on that move? It did come down a little bit. Now actually pushed up a little bit. That's how just difficult it can be. Intel, definitely one to keep on watch. 
LRCX. What a big move there for Lamb Research from 490s to 520s today. About 30 points on that name. 4% move on a $500 stock. That's, that's going to be moving there. MU starting to pull back now. We're starting to get a little bit of a sell-off here towards the close. I think this is more like profit-taking uh, for the kind of day trading action. Some people will swing this, but some people will take the money and run. Cardinal Health with a big push. What happened here? What's going on in Cardinal Health, team? It seems like it's an interesting move there. Not something I look at often. And now I can really say McKesson <laughs> yesterday. Everybody got on me about that one. We'll see what happens here in McKesson. Can it go higher? Looks like these Cardinal Health really pushing strong there. ABC pushing strong. Medical distribution coming back here. We'll see what happens on these day names. Not really names that I look at often, but definitely getting a little bit of a lift. JPM here towards the close. we got about two or three minutes, three minutes left here as – we start to come down. It's not doing much here, team. I'm just going to take the money and run here in JPM. Let's go ahead. Let me try to get out here. Just going to cover on the offer. Boom. Out there. 129.01. We're out. We out. We took the profits and ran there. We'll see what happens on JPM. I'm out of JPM. I was trying to swing it. We took some profits. That's for sure. It was a nice win on the day. So really nice day bouncing back. I had a really nice day on some day trading action, some swing trading, but no overnight positions. We'll see what happens if we can continue just riding this wall of worry up to the upside. And who knows? For all we know, we could be right back into a new bull market if we could just shake the bank worries. But I'll tell you that there's still worries out there. I, I look around and a lot of people still concerned about what can happen in the banks. I read what happened with the Fed and they act like they got caught by surprise. So I don't know if this is kind of completely done and we're just missing out on a really big rally right now because that's the truth. It is starting to take off. And if it continues to take off, it could just push until the FOMO really hits. And then we could be like, oh yeah, the banking situation's over with. What will happen from here? The truth is, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. The only thing you can do is try to keep managing that risk to uh, reward and understand that sometimes we're going to have to be in the market as investors. But as swing traders and day traders, we can determine when we're coming in and out of the market. I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Pre-market prep. Don't miss it. Starts every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. And of course, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about why I got into JPM's trade, especially you guys saw the hanging man candle today. We've been going through it with Japanese candlestick charting techniques. I want you guys to check it out. Like always, smash the like. We'll see you guys a little bit later today. And what we got? It's uh, it's Wednesday. So uh, Thursday, we'll have a little bit of surprise for you. But we'll see what happens tomorrow, team. I'm not sure if we'll have start swing trading tomorrow. It all depends on the quarterly meeting and how long that kind of extends to. But like always, you guys be safe out there. Keep trading. Always working on your skills to better yourself. I'll be here to go along with you guys. Smash the like. We'll see you next time on Start Swing Trading. Hit the like on the way out, team.